All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to replace the hard drive with an SSD on this late 2012 Mac mini model A1347. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna twist this bottom cover to release the latch or the locks. So as you can see, there's this little dot here. So the solid one means it's closed or locked and then this um, hollow one means it's open. So what we're gonna do, use your thumbs here and then twist it just like that. Once you've done that, you can get underneath and you can go ahead and lift this cover off. All right, it was really dusty. I cleaned it off, but it left some, I think uh, because they have like incense or some burning stuff, you can see it actually left some stains on this metal cover. Anyways, we're going to set that aside. Let's go ahead now and take out these screws. So I haven't opened one of these in a while, so I have to double check what size screws these are. <clears throat> Let's see. A lot of times they're like T8 or T10 or something. So these appear to be T8 or Torx 8 screws. Okay, so we're gonna remove the four T8 or Torx 8 screws here. You do wanna keep them in order, all the screws, because they are different size, shape, and lengths, as you can see. Um, none of them look the same at all. So the way I do that, put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them, okay? And that way I can easily keep track of them. Okay, so we're gonna undo these screws as well. These screws actually kind of just stay in place. Um, so yeah, the main ones we're removing are these two. Uh, usually you wanna pull these out too, but they're staying there, so I don't know. All right, as you can see, we can already lift this cover up, but there, those screws are staying in there. Okay, let's go ahead and also remove the fan. Um, looks like we need a different size screwdriver for this. Uh, most likely a T5, oh, okay. So it's actually a T6, it seems. Um, a T5 is too wobbly, so we're going to use a T6 or Torx 6 screwdriver to remove the fan screws here. Okay, again, keep all the screws in order. It looks like these actually hold themselves to the fan as well, so that's nice. You don't have to worry about losing them. And don't forget the one down in this corner. Okay, so now we got all those screws out. You can see we can lift the fan up. You want to be careful because there's a cable attached underneath. So we can lift it. Oh, there's still a lot of dust under here. So I'm going to have to clean this up quite a bit more. Um, but yeah, you can see all that fine powdered smoke dust. Let me actually zoom in a bit so you can see better. Okay, so this kind of connector, these can be a little bit tricky. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it under there. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> so these connectors can be a little tricky. You want to get underneath the connector and then pop it up. But you don't want to go too far that you end up prying off the um the part that's on the motherboard itself so what i do is i use my fingernail here again or you can use a plastic tool let me use this so i can kind of show you so you can see a little bit better so you can use a tool small tool like this just get underneath i like to use the corner to get under the center of it and then you can kind of twist it to pop it up just like that all right i don't know if you can see that let me kind of show a closer view but the connector oops the connector here has a little groove there. So that's where we're getting the tool into that little groove and then popping it up from the center. You don't want to pry up from the side corners because then you'll end up prying up this and you don't want to do that. All right, anyways, this thing is pretty dusty. So I'm going to take it outside, brush it off and blow it out and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So you can see we cleaned it out a bit. So this stuff is kind of stuck there. It doesn't really come off very well. But I got out as much as I could. You can see the fan inside. Um, looks pretty clean. The way you know is you can actually see through the blades. You can see to the other side. But anyways, um, we're going to set this aside. Make sure that you know which way to put this back. Okay. You don't want to get it upside down and then end up damaging things. All right. Let's see. What else do we got to remove in here? Well, let's actually go over the RAM. So you got these two. You can pull these tabs to the side. Once it pops up, you can go ahead and wiggle it and pull it out. Again, there are two sticks of RAM here, and the type of RAM, as you can see, 8 gigs PC3L12800S. So you can put any PC3L12800S RAM. Um, I don't know if they make 16 gig sticks. They might. Um, if you can find them, then you can go ahead and use that. But again, that's what I see here. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think 8 gigs comes in 16 gigs. It might, but it'd be super expensive. All right, so let's go ahead and put the RAM back in. This one's a little bit tricky because the latches are on top here on both sides. So we've got to get it in slightly, the first one. Then you go ahead and get that. 
and then make sure it's pushed in all the way. I like to pinch both sides and then click it down. All right, so I think this might be aftermarket RAM. This is crucial. Okay. <clears throat> Same thing with the other one, goes in at an angle. Okay, push it in all the way, pinch the two, and then we can go ahead and click that down. There we go. All right, let's see what else do we got to remove. We're going to remove this plastic piece here. So let's see, I think we're still going to use this T6, Torque 6, yep. Okay, we might not actually have to remove this, but I'm going to remove it anyways. Okay, so we got that screw out. And then, let's see here. Oh, actually, we... Um, yeah, we might not have to remove it, but I'm going to remove it anyways. I think it might be trapping some connectors under there. So now that we've taken the two screws out, let's see here. This one kind of has to swing out at an angle a little bit. So I'm kind of lifting this and then rotating it out. All right, hopefully you can see that. Okay, as you can see, it's kind of stuck, but there we go. All right, and it comes out just like that. And it's pretty dusty under here too. So I'm going to clean that off as well. All right, give me a bit and I'll be back. All right, so I got some of the dust, but it's kind of stained that color. It doesn't want to come out. All right, so we're just going to leave that as well. Okay, set that aside. Okay, again, make sure you keep all the screws and everything in order because if you mix them up, it's going to be difficult to um, find the exact order to put them back in. All right, I believe this screw stays up here. I don't think that's mounted into anything. So we're going to leave that there. Okay, let's go ahead and lift out the wireless antennas now. So we're going to lift this side up slightly, and then we got to kind of swing it out just like the other black plastic one. And you want to be careful because there's a wireless antenna underneath here. Okay, as you can see, there's this cable coming out here. So we're going to pull this out slightly to get this out over here. Then we're going to swing it over this way, and then we can get underneath here and... Oops, that plastic wasn't supposed to come out. Normally that sticker holds on strong and it doesn't come out, but it came off. So we're just gonna take this out. I think all the um, dust, yeah, all the smoke got under there and you can see it's no longer sticky on that one spot on this side. So it popped out. All right, so we're gonna remove that. And then we have the wireless antenna here. It's actually covered with some adhesive. So we're gonna peel that up. I'm gonna use these tweezers. Might have to use my needle nose pliers because these don't grip too strong. So I'm gonna switch over to some needle nose pliers. Um, you can use whatever works. Uh, normally, if I don't use pliers, I'll just use my fingernails. But anyways, let's go ahead and peel this up. Okay, and we'll hold that out of the way. And then we're gonna pop this antenna out just by pulling the tail up straight up like this. Okay. And there we go. So now we've got the wireless antenna out. Okay, and you wanna be careful with that because if you damage this piece, then your wireless isn't gonna work right. So this circle right here is the wireless antenna. Okay, I'm gonna clean this off a, a little bit as well and I'll be back. Okay, clean that off a little bit. Let's go ahead now and get to the next parts of this repair. Okay, if you want, you can push this down just so you remember that that was there. Here you can see there's the hard drive connector here. This model actually has a second spot for a hard drive, so that's what this connector is. You can actually put a second hard drive on top of this, um, but you would need the the cable here. All right, so let's see, what else do I gotta remove? We're almost done. We're gonna have to remove, I think, one more screw it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna remove this one screw down here as well. Okay, again, you wanna keep all these screws in order, so make sure that you don't get mixed up. So this screw is super long, as you can see, and we're gonna set that aside. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we need to actually push or pull the whole motherboard and everything out of here. There is this connection for the power supply, but we can't remove that until we pull the rest of everything forward. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna disconnect the hard drive right for now. Um, so just flip this up. All right, oops, let me zoom in here. Okay, so this has a um, just press down connection. So I'm gonna just get my fingernail under there. You can use plastic pry tool, whatever you want, but there you go. All right, so we disconnected the hard drive. Okay, now let's go ahead and zoom out and show you how we pull out the motherboard. 
So there's multiple ways you can do this. There's tools that you can use for these little holes here, the ones with the silver. Um, you could technically just use two screwdrivers and use that to pull it. You can also just use one screwdriver just like this. As you can see, it popped slightly forward. I don't know if you can see that. Then you can go over to this side, same thing while holding that, you can go ahead and pull this. Okay, and you can see it pop more forward. And we're just gonna keep slowly walking it out just like that. There you go, you can see it's coming out quite a bit. So I'm gonna use my hands in here and then I'm gonna push the casing back while I pull this forward. Okay, whoa, that's weird. That's not supposed to pop out like that. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so if you want, you can continue using the screwdriver to help, but now you can't reach that one anymore, so you might have to pull from here. Oh, there's one more cable here that I didn't see earlier, because it was kind of, um, actually it wasn't tucked under anything, I don't know why I didn't see that. But there's another connector here, so make sure you disconnect that as well. Sorry about that. Alright, so same thing, you can just get underneath, just like this. And then again, you're going to just pop up at the center of that connector, just like that, and it comes out. So that's also for the hard drive. I think this was for the hard drive indicator light. I might be wrong. We'll see when I take it out if there's anything that I'm not noticing, but there we go. Yeah, there's all this smoke dust on it, powder. Okay, anyways, <clears throat> here you can see the power supply connector there. So we are going to have to remove that. I use my fingernail um, to do that, but you can also kind of try and use a tool to pull it out. But anyways, now that we got that, we can go ahead and pull this forward more. And here you can see we can grab that. So let me actually try and show you this way. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so if you can't really use your fingernails or tools to do it, you can kind of grab this ca these cables and wiggle it a bit. Okay, so let me see if I can... Actually, let me zoom in a bit to show you this. It's, the lighting's not too good, but you kind of just wiggle it side to side like this, and there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out again so you can see everything. Sorry about that. Okay, so I don't need to see all the tools, but there we go. Now we got that, and we can go ahead and slide this out. Again, you want to be careful. Just slowly, carefully wiggle it out, and there we go. So we got the motherboard, everything out. Um, this back side is also pretty dusty, so I'm going to clean that up as well. You can see there's a BIOS or CMOS battery here, or RTC, whatever you want to call it, real-time clock. Um, so this kind of battery, you kind of push it in this way, and then you can pull it up. You will have to use a tool, excuse me, like a screwdriver or something, or a plastic tool if you want. Okay, and yeah, you also got a wireless antenna running along here. You also got this small connector, I believe is for the power button. Yeah. So this small two pin connector here is for the power button and it comes out like those other ones that you just pry it up from the bottom. And there we go. So I'm gonna clean this out and I'll be back. And then we're gonna go ahead and show how to remove the hard drive from here as well as the power supply. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So we clean that out. We clean the bottom of the motherboard a bit so it's not as all dusty and powdery. So we'll set this aside. Okay. And let's go ahead and remove the final remaining components. So we're going to be removing the power supply first, and then we're going to remove the hard drive. So, man, there's a lot of dust on there. I guess I'll clean that once we get it out. Okay, so there's two screws holding this in place. So let's go ahead and remove those two screws. So this screw is holding part of the hard drive caddy in place. And this one is holding the hard drive caddy as well as the power supply in place. Okay, so now that we've gotten those two screws out, Okay, um, we're going to be able to pull out the power supply in here. Okay, to remove the power supply, let's zoom in a bit. There's this metal tab here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So this, we're going to have to pull it out. All right. It just slides out just like this. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and twist this piece out of place. Okay. So, okay. As you can see, we rotated it counterclockwise and now it's this way and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the power supply out so you can use this tab to kind of help and i'm also using my finger on the inside on the side of the power supply over here and we're just going to kind of use that to help wiggle and pull it out you can also you might also have to rotate this piece a little bit 
while you're pushing this. So let's go ahead and get that out. Okay. All right, we got that. And let's go ahead and now wiggle this. Huh, why is it stuck? It should be coming out, but for some reason it's still stuck in there. Oh, okay, this foot was kind of still caught in the hole, so I had to twist it to get it completely out. All right, it wasn't twisted enough, and hopefully now we can get this out. All right, make sure this cable doesn't get caught in anything, and wheel it, and there we go. So here we go, we got the power supply out. Um, they do have some model information here, I think 614-0515. You will want to check yours in case yours is different. They also have some more model information here, ADP-8. 5AF it looks like. All right, so there you go in case you need that information for any reason. All right, let me clean the dust off of this as well and I'll be back. All right, I cleaned out what I could, but it's kind of stuck on there. Anyways, this cable is also replaceable. So if you happen to damage this cable, you might be able to get a replacement. But I think usually when people sell the power supply, it comes with the whole thing like this. Okay, so we're going to set that aside as well. <clears throat> Now all that's left is the hard drive. So the hard drive is also pretty simple to remove. Now that we've gotten everything else out, let me zoom out a bit. It is pretty dusty in there, so I'm going to clean that. But basically, you lift this slightly, and then you can go ahead and pull this back. Just like that, all right? And you can either lift it out from inside the middle or from the front, but the inside is probably a little bit easier. There we go. We got this hard drive. And this is a one terabyte hard drive. This is a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna ask the customer if they want to stick with one terabyte or go with a 480 gig SSD uh, because they probably don't have that much stuff stored on it. <clears throat> so it's up to them what they want to do. Um, they said if the data's lost, the data's lost. So most likely they'll be okay with the 480 gig. Um, but yeah, you can put any size you want in there. If you want, you can get a four terabyte. They have four terabyte SSDs. I don't know why you would need that much storage, but yep, you can do that. All right. Also the back here has these little metal tabs here. So be very careful with that. I believe this is the hard drive, um, indicator light or activity light that I was talking about. And that has that little cable that runs along here. All right. I think if this breaks, the computer will still work. Okay. But again, that is um, the hard drive activity light that shows on the front. And it also shows like if the computer's in sleep mode or something. All right, so anyways, I'm gonna clean this up and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So the customer said they wanted one terabyte. So we're gonna be putting this SanDisk um, Ultra 2 and it's about one terabyte. It's actually 960 gigs, all right? So anyways, Let's go ahead and pull out the old hard drive. So to do this, we're going to have to remove all the screws from the sides here. Okay. So there's four screws holding it in place. It looks like we need the larger screwdriver for this. So let's go ahead and switch back to the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver. And let's go ahead and remove these four screws. Okay. Um, you do want to keep these screws in order as well. I'm going to just set them aside in the pattern I'm removing them. So there's four screws, so we're going to remove those four. All right, it's a little bit cramped over on this side because of this bracket and the cable there. But there you go. I'll most likely put that screw last just to make sure everything's lined up. Okay, we'll get this screw out as well. Oops, hit the last one at the bottom here. Okay, once you've gotten all four screws out, we can carefully get the hard drive out. Be careful because the cable is attached to it. So as you drop it, this cable, you don't want it to get caught on anything and damage itself. So move that out of the way. All right, there we go. So make sure you keep this in the right position that when we put this back, it's gonna go in that way again. Okay, so I'll leave that there for now. And we have this film on top, so let's go ahead and peel this up. Oh, it's actually tearing here. So you actually have to peel from the side. Um, for SSDs, you don't really need this film because they don't have any exposed um, circuitry. But uh, for regular uh, hard drives, you'll kind of want to put this just in case 
This helps keep stuff from shorting it out. It's not really super important, but it's nice to have it there. Okay, so we're gonna peel the sides up here. And, oh, they actually slotted this cable through. So we're gonna have to peel from this side as well. Okay, it's a little bit tough to get underneath this to peel it up. Yeah, that's tough. Let me try with this little pick tool because I can get in the little groove there. Got part of it to kind of come up. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna peel this off. Okay, so just peel this thing up. Just like this. All right, there we go. And I can see we can lift this. And we're gonna actually peel this whole thing up. Okay, and we're gonna route this out of here. So let's get that off. You technically don't need to take this out, but it's gonna make it easier to take this out because they do also put a little adhesive there. Okay, so I'm gonna get my hand under here and slowly carefully peel this up. You wanna be careful not to crease this cable, okay? So I'm kind of like pulling it this way while I'm peeling it back to keep from creasing it. Oh, it's peeling up this sticker from the hard drive as well. Um, we're probably gonna just peel that separately and take that off later. But all right, let's go ahead and keep peeling it. There we go. Now that we got this disconnected, we're gonna grab that and wiggle that off and take the sticker from the hard drive out and try and stick it back down. So let's go ahead and put this sticker back onto the hard drive. Okay. All right, we're going to set the old hard drive aside. We're going to now get the SSD and we're going to put the connector on there. Okay, now that you got that on, stick that back down. Okay. This uh, SATA cable is actually... A loose fit so it's actually very easy to pull this cable out and I guess that's why they put this adhesive here okay now we're gonna thread this back through here okay it's a little bit tricky to do this thread that back through there we go again this um, this piece isn't really necessary but it's just nice to have it there so I'm just gonna put it back Okay, thread that through, there we go. And we can just get this film back on in place. Okay, wrap that over, stick that down, wrap this side over, and stick this down as well. Okay, and now I'm just gonna squeeze both edges to make sure the adhesive is holding strong. Again, be careful not to damage the cable. Okay, and then we're gonna get the hard drive back in. Let's see, make sure I get this the right way. So when this goes in, it's gonna go like that. So that's right, okay. So let's get the hard drive back in. Make sure this plastic film comes up in the right spot. Okay, and then we're just gonna get all those screws back into place. So I'm gonna hold this. All right, get that screw in. Loosely fit it first, just to make sure everything is lined up. Okay, same thing with the other screw up here. All right, I'm not tightening, tightening these screws in all the way yet. I'm just loosely fitting them. Okay, last two screws. This screw in here. Last screw over here. Okay, so this last screw can be a little bit tricky here. Make sure you don't smash the cable. Make sure to keep that out of the way. All right, and let's go ahead now and tighten that in. 
good. All right, now that we got all four screws in, you can go ahead and tighten it all into place. Okay, just like that. Okay, and the last screw. There we go. So now let's go ahead and reassemble the computer. <clears throat> So we got this piece, we're gonna just get this back in, okay? Slide it back there. All right, and you wanna get the screw mounts back uh, lined up again. So you might have to kind of lift the back a little and work it a little to get it in right. There we go. As you can see, now it's holding itself in place. Um, we can go ahead and actually put the one screw over here first. We're gonna switch back to the T6 or Torque 6 screwdriver. All right, and let's get this one screw over here in. There we go. Okay, then we're going to slide the power supply back into place. So let's grab this. Make sure you don't put it upside down. You want it to go right side up. Just get that in, slowly work it in, and slowly because you don't want to get that cable caught in anything. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going, working our way in. You're gonna have to rotate this as well so that it can clear this properly. There we go. Okay, once everything looks lined up. Huh. Okay, it's not lined up right. So it's slightly over too much this side, so I need to kind of readjust it. There we go. Okay, get the screw holes lined up. You should feel it like go into place then we're going to go ahead and put that screw in. Okay. Next, we're going to lock in the connector here. So you want to get this lined up right. There's two notches in there. Um, it goes into the back notches. I don't know if you can see. So there's a notch all the way in the back there. Okay, so that's the one we're going for. Same thing with the front there. You want it to go into the back notch. It's hard to show this but there you go once you get it in the back notches we're just going to twist it back over okay all right this is kind of tough but there you go twist that back into place so that it's um, parallel to this cover then you're going to take this metal bracket or this metal i don't know what you would call that back the shim and then it straddles between the plastic of the base there and then we're just going to slide that in okay and that's just there to prevent it from twisting itself back out. As you can see, now we can't twist it. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead now and get the motherboard and put the motherboard back in. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, make sure again, this side is um, down and we're gonna slowly, carefully slide this back into place. Okay. Carefully get that all lined up and slowly get that in. Okay, when putting this piece back, you wanna be careful. We are gonna to have to push these two slightly inwards to make sure that they clear properly. Okay, so make sure that this, especially these foam pads, sometimes they get caught outside, so make sure those go in properly. And this one, as you can see, is kind of sticking out, so make sure that goes in. All right, and do that on both sides. Okay, once you get everything cleared properly, you can go ahead and slowly push it down. Oops, I actually was not supposed to push it all the way in yet. So let's pull this back out. There we go. I wasn't supposed to push that all the way in yet. We have to put the power supply connector back in. And while this thing is slightly out, it's easiest to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. You want to make sure that these gold pins are facing up because sometimes if you buy a, a replacement, it will be upside down and you don't want to plug that cable in upside down. So make sure you plug it in with the gold pins facing up. Okay, so get that lined up. It's hard to um, kind of show this. Let me zoom in a bit. I'll show it as the best I can. But uh, all right, get that lined up. All right, and then we're gonna just push this connector in, slowly working our way top, bottom, top, bottom, or left, right, left, right, whatever you want to, depending which way you're looking at it. Okay, so it's in all the way now. Okay, now let's go ahead and, oops, 
Sorry, people are messaging and it's messing up my thing so I can't zoom. There we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, okay, let's move this out of the way so it's not distracting. Again, line this back up and make sure that these side pieces are in right. Okay, so make sure those clips go in, make sure the foam pieces go in. Oops, it's not coming in right. There we go. Okay, and then you can slowly push the motherboard back in. There we go, and then push it all the way. There we go, lock it into place. Everything's good. Now we're gonna get this connector down here and the hard drive, let's zoom in. So get this, excuse me, the hard drive activity light connector in. Just get it lined up. And then once you have it lined up, you can just push it down. Sorry, it's weird to work on it at that angle. So let me rotate it. Get it all lined up and then push it down just like that. It clicks into place. Okay, then you got the hard drive connector here as well. Make sure it's lined up. Okay, it helps to kind of look from the side here. I don't know if I can show it, but it helps to look from the side because you can see where that connector is. Okay, get that lined up and then push that down. There we go. Okay, make sure it's in all the way, good. Let's zoom back out here and let's get back the other screws. So first one we have is that super long screw. It goes into this silver lined hole. Okay, and then we're gonna tighten that down into place. All right, just like that. All right, next thing we got is, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see, should I put the wireless antennas in first? Yeah, let's go ahead and put the wireless antenna in first. So next we got this wireless antenna board, okay? It helps to kind of start with it down here like this. And again, we're just gonna make sure that adhesive L is out of the way. Get this lined up. You know it's lined up because if you try and move it around on top of the uh, connector, it won't move. And then once you got that in, just click it down, okay? Then we're gonna rotate this over again, just like before, all right? tuck that cable in under there. I'm going to use the tweezers to help hold the adhesive out of the way. Okay, make sure to grab that, pull that up slightly. Okay, get the antenna back under there. Why is it being difficult? Oh, actually, sorry, the adhesive just goes over this. Okay, so stick the adhesive down on top of the antenna. And then you can get the rest of the antenna over there. There is also this piece, so if you want, put this piece back on as well. Okay, get this plastic piece back on top as well. Let's actually hold this out of the way. Okay, get this piece back in there. It's getting tucked inside. I don't know why they have this plastic piece here. It's not really necessary, but I'm going to stick that down as well. The adhesive is kind of like not good, so I don't know if it's going to stick back down. We'll see. Okay, just like that. Rotate this. Yeah, no, that's going to keep moving around. But anyways, get that cable back on top. And then this one can be a little bit tricky to get in. Okay, you kind of have to lift it slightly while kind of getting it because part of this mesh goes above the silver and part of it goes underneath. Or not the silver, the aluminum housing. But there we go, everything is lined up. Okay, let's go ahead now and tighten these screws. Um, these ones are T8 or Torx 8 screws. Okay. So this is gonna be, do these screws even reach? Okay, never mind. So these two screws actually aren't even used. These two screws are only used for if you have a second hard drive, it helps hold the other hard drive in place. So we're gonna put in these side screws. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, let's get this in. 
Okay, and these two screws are important because they hold the bottom cover on along with this other one down here. Okay, let's get those in. There we go. All right, now we got this uh, black plastic piece. We're gonna swing it into place. So we'll get this tail end in first and then swing it over just like that. Okay, get that lined up. You'll know it's lined up because it doesn't move around now. Then we'll get this screw. I'm gonna switch back to the T6 or Torx 6 screwdriver. And we'll get this screw into place. There we go. So now this piece will stay in place. Then we got the last one is the fan here. Okay, so make sure to reconnect the fan connector. Okay, get that lined up. And then push that into place. It's a little tricky here. Let me use this tool. Okay, get it all lined up and then push it down into place. Make sure it's clipped in all the way. You can use your finger to push it best. All right. Then make sure this screw goes down into the hole here. Let me zoom out a tiny bit. Okay, there we go. Get that all lined up. Sorry, it's wobbling, I know. All right, and then let's get these last screws in. So tighten that down. I like to twist it backwards to make sure everything lines up properly. And then once it clicks, you can know it's lined up and tighten it into place. All right, and that's pretty much it. We're gonna put the bottom cover on and then we're gonna install the OS. Um, the OS is the same on every single Mac, so I don't show it in my videos. But if you need help with that, just let me know. It helps to do a time machine backup before because then you can just load the time machine backup back onto the Mac. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this cover. So you line up this white dot with the open one, drop it into place and then twist it back over, all right? And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can also uh, learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one, all right? Let's drop this, bye.